Hello everyone, my name is Kitetsu and welcome back to my channel. So in this video I want to talk about another semi-controversial issue with Age of Sigmar and it's not a big deal, it's not got loads of people complaining about it, but nevertheless I want to discuss it. And that is the issue of whether Age of Sigmar should have a strength versus toughness system like Warhammer 40k does. So if you watched my video on uh, whether Age of Sigmar is as bad as people say it is, I mentioned that I've spoken to a lot of ignorant people in my time. And one of the conversations I've had with a very ignorant person has been about obviously the rules for Age of Sigmar versus the rules for 40k. This was actually before 8th edition 40k came out and obviously they've kind of Age of Sigmarized the rules a lot in 40k. But I thought it was quite funny that the guy I was talking to back then said that Age of Sigmar was absolutely terrible because the rules were so dumbed down and none of it made sense and 40k was so much more in depth and just basically that everything about the Age of Sigmar rule set was just completely horrendous and terrible. Fast forward a few months to the 8th edition of 40k being released and he was pretty much saying that these rules were the best thing he'd ever seen that had come to 40k and I was thinking well to be honest they're very similar to what Games of Workshop did with Age of Sigmar before that. And then to be honest all he could come up with really was that the strength versus toughness thing for Age of Sigmar is terrible but there are a lot of people who actually love Age of Sigmar that still would prefer to have the strength versus toughness system of 40k and one of the things I specifically heard someone say is it doesn't make sense that you can wound a dragon and a grot just as easily as one another and that's all because you have hit and wound rolls and those are static and they don't change at all depending on which target you're attacking. I'm not attacking the uh, 40k system at all because I actually think they've come up with this really elegant solution for strength versus toughness like we used to have this horrible table now it's as simple as are they equal less than or greater or double or half the uh, toughness in terms of the attacking strength so it makes it very easy to work out what your dice roll should be what i do want to do with this video is just really quickly put forward a case for the system that is in age of sigmar because really i think both systems work incredibly well for their chosen game and i think there's realism arguments for why both are a good idea in a way. I think the whole point really is that basically because the games are subtly quite different to one another the differences don't necessarily translate across from one game to the other incredibly clearly and as for whether the hit and wound rolls work for Age of Sigmar, those slight differences between the two games actually mean everything in terms of why it does work for Age of Sigmar. So first things first, we've got our Star Drake on the left and our Grot on the right, and I thought, well, let's take an Ardboy boss and work out statistically whether he is indeed as likely to wound the Star Drake as he is a Grot. And I've given him, I think, an Oruk Forged Big Chopper, and it's at a plus one to hit because he's a boss and basically the answer is that he is twice as likely to wound the grot as he is the star drake he's not very likely to wound either because obviously he's not an actual character he's just a unit leader basically but he can basically cause about 0.5 wounds on average to a star drake and about one wound on average to a grot and basically that all boils down to the armor save what people seem to forget is because the numbers are static on the hit and wound rolls they forget to take into account what they're attacking and the key difference is here that armor saves mean basically everything in Age of Sigmar. Well not everything because the other big important factor is the wounds. You'll notice a lot in Age of Sigmar that there are loads and loads of models with huge numbers of wounds. So a Star Drake has 16 of them for example whereas a Grot has one and basically the whole idea here is that it's the interplay between the save as to either how good your armor is or how tough and resilient your skin is and then this massive wound pool tells you how resilient and tough they are against damage basically. If you look at that giant axe that the Oruk is holding, if he swings that at anything, let's face it, it is going to cause some damage. I mean, I don't really think there's any shrugging off an axe blow from that thing. Whereas if you look at what the Grots are holding, they don't look very dangerous. So the whole point is the chance of them wounding 
is lower. Hence, they have to roll a four to wound, whereas the Oruk is only gonna have to roll a three. So that makes sense. What I thought I'd do then is basically just pit the uh, Star Drake against the Grots. And I think that illustrates a really interesting point as well, because it's only when you start setting up these kind of interactions that you realize just how balanced the system actually works in Age of Sigma. So if you take one single lowly Grot against a Star Drake, the chance of a Grot doing any damage to the Star Drake is obviously going to be very low. And what you find out is the Grot has a 0.08 Eight chance of wounding a Star Drake. And again, partly that comes down to the fact that they're generally not very skilled with their weapons, but also the damage of the weapons is low. Now, here's the thing though, say you did manage to cause a wound on a Star Drake, because he is a very tough dragon, you will at best, which you've got less than a 10% chance of doing, you will cause one wound. One wound equates to around 6% of his health. So really what you've actually done with the Grot is given him a tiny scratch. On the other hand, if the Star Drake attacks the uh, Grot, on average he's going to do seven wounds, which is 700% damage to a Grot. Like it would kill him seven times over. So hopefully I think that kind of illustrates the point that I'm trying to make here. The other thing I thought I'd do is just do a fun little comparison between like Age of Sigmar's version of a super soldier compared to a standard soldier and then we can look at 40k's version of a super soldier versus the same thing. Basically again this comes down to the fact that a Stormcast is much heavily armoured. They have a 4 plus save whereas a normal member of the free guild is going to have a 5 plus save. So automatically they're heavier armoured and the shields that the liberators have also provide them quite decent protection but the extra toughness of a liberator comes from the fact they have two wounds compared to the one wounds that each member of the free guild have what that basically means is that if you inflict a wound that is strong enough to kill a free guild person a stormcast liberator is absolutely fine so i think that really illustrates very well how the toughness system works in age of sigma and obviously we have to remember as well that damage works very differently between Age of Sigma and 40k because you can't transfer the damage around in 40k. So say you did 5 attacks doing 3 damage apiece against a unit of guardsmen, you would only kill the 5 guardsmen. Whereas in Age of Sigma, if you inflicted 5 wounds that did 3 damage, you would kill 15 models if they were all single wound models. And the idea there is that if you swing round a massive two-handed axe, you can potentially cleave through several people with it. And personally, I actually like that idea more. Again, they're very different games, so it doesn't necessarily mean it works in one and doesn't work in the other, it's just different systems of playing. But if you look at 40k they do things very differently as I kind of suggested before because they have the toughness system you've got a guardsman and a tactical marine the whole reason that a space marine is like a super soldier is literally reflected again by the fact he's got better armor but instead of having more wounds he has higher toughness so he's stronger, he's more resilient to damage, and he's got far better armor. And then on top of that, obviously, they're just more skilled at shooting and fighting anyway. So in principle, it's just a completely different system. And I'm ignoring Primaris because, yes, they do have two wounds, but they're more like a super, super soldier, really, let's face it. So the whole toughness, really, of a tactical marine versus just a normal person really does come from the fact that they literally have a toughness statistic. And therefore, it works in a very different way but the net result is actually quite similar. I've just thrown some plague marines in as well as another example. Again they have exactly the same number of wounds but their toughness is then one step even higher. And they've also got this disgustingly resilient rule, which all factors into just how tough and resilient they are. If you're actually putting Primaris Marines up against a Plague Marine, they're actually pretty favorable in terms of how durable and resilient they are on the tabletop. Maybe with a slight bias towards the uh, Primaris, just because having the extra wound is a little bit more reliable. But I think basically what this illustrates is that in 40k, 
there is a trade-off between having a high toughness value and whatever the value of the wounds is. If you have the toughness really high and drop the wounds down to a certain point, they will cancel each other out, kind of. And I guess that's the point I was trying to make with this video is that personally, I don't think Age of Sigma needs a strength versus toughness system. I think what we have just works perfectly fine as it is. And I think when you actually look at proper examples of tabletop battles that you will come across all the time, you will realize that it is actually very balanced and fair in the way that units will do damage to one another and receive damage to be honest and just how resistant they are to the damage. So to be honest I know this is a really short video and not necessarily the most exciting one in the world but it's just one of those little bugbears that I've had for a while now and to be honest I just wanted to talk about it, make a video on it, share my thoughts and also obviously as always hear what you guys think. Some of you are probably going to think I'm talking a load of rubbish and <laughs> that's fine. I think basically the take home message is these are just two very different games. You know each system they have works within their own setting. So yeah let me know down below if you think Age of Sigmar should have the strength versus toughness, whether you would like it more or not. I mean to be honest I think just the idea of of like what does a wound roll actually mean like the hit roll is simple you either hit them or you miss them but the wound roll means you either did wound them or you didn't wound them so say you've smashed an axe in someone you've hit them okay the idea of failing to wound means that you dealt a glancing blow or maybe it bounced off the dragon's scales a little bit or maybe you hit them in just a non-critical area that didn't really do enough damage to bother them i think the whole idea of toughness in age of sigma just wouldn't really work that well because by the logic of like hitting and wounding the whole point of saying you've hit and you've wounded suggests that you've hit them with enough force to do damage. I think the idea in my head is that if you swing that axe at someone that that auric is holding you've done enough with that to wound them. I don't think really it matters whether you are hitting a grot or a dragon I think that axe is going to do some damage either way you know and then the idea of toughness to me comes from the idea of the armor save and how many wounds they have so I don't know I feel like there's a really profound point somewhere in what I'm trying to say but I just don't know if I'm explaining it that well but hopefully you guys can understand what I mean with this video I didn't want to bore you guys on something that's quite a simple topic I didn't want to make it too mathematical and statistic because let's just face it that's quite boring for some people but anyway guys don't forget to like the video don't forget to hit the subscribe button and you can support me on patreon the link is down below but yeah just uh, as an aside I am absolutely knackered at the moment because I'm doing this 25 hours of extra study a week and it's basically degree level chemistry and some of it is exceedingly difficult this 25 hours is so tiring it's taking up so much of my time you know I was literally almost falling asleep at work today because I'm so tired obviously I'm still making my videos I'm still doing my absolute best I can with them but it's very tiring. Obviously the news has slowed down a little bit for Age of Sigma at the moment whilst uh, all of the 40k stuff is being talked about. But anyway guys thanks for watching and I will see you soon.